Hello again, you're watching Everard Junction and today is part 10 of the uh, Building a Model Railway series. Now I've already done a little bit of work and that's to uh, get a little bit of a, a backboard here over on this side for a small bit of terrain that I'm going to be building. It really is quite flat on the board at the moment and that can make things look a little bit sort of uniform, a bit dull. Uh, so where possible it's always a good idea to try and add some terrain that either lowers or raises the baseboard and just creates some areas of interest and makes things look a bit more interesting. You can see over here how effective it is if this was just flat and had just been grassed up to the backboard it would probably look quite dull but by adding the hillside there the wall and the foliage it makes things look a lot more interesting. Now I've got uh, limited space over here because most of it is for carriages and it is a railway yard so it will be mostly flat in real life um, but uh, there is an opportunity over on this side to create a little bit of terrain. And what I've done is I've got a very thin piece of plywood, it's about four millimetres thick and I've used a jigsaw to cut it into a relatively natural looking shape. You can see the way it's, uh, it rises and falls along the length of the board here. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is putting some sort of plaster or uh, terrain that goes down to the track level and should create a nice little sort of raised area, a nice sort of embankment or hillside. The first thing I did was uh, just make sure that this is all dried and is really solid. So what I did was uh, I ran a bead of glue all the way along the edge where it sits I then placed it down and then clamped it with some G clamps in strategic places all the way across it to keep the pressure on and then at the same time to keep it upright and the same orientation I put this little scrap block of timber in, um, glued it down and then just drilled through the side of him there to hold up the, uh, the backboard That make sure it's the right, right pitch, it's not leading over and the uh, the G clamps pushing down on it make sure it's nice and adhered to the baseboard and it really isn't going anywhere so now I can actually move on to the fun stuff and start the terrain for areas like that I typically use plaster bandage and I've used it all the way along this area and I found it to be extremely effective and it did a nice job but uh, what I'm going to be using today is a new product made by the same company that uh, I wanted to try and this is Woodland Scenics Shaper Sheet and uh, looking at the instructions it should just be a little bit easier and sort of faster to actually build this area up so uh, we'll see how it works so here it is and basically it's a sort of on the top side sort of white fluffy sort of texture which will absorb plaster very well and then on the back you've got like a, an aluminium foil backing which will prevent any plaster seeping through so the idea is you basically bend this to any shape you want and it should stay like that and then once you're happy on the top side you cover it with plaster and it then forms a rock hard shell which means underneath there's no need for large amounts of scrunched up newspaper no need for any cardboard formers to be coming out from the back scene and no need for anything else so it should just be simpler, easier and quicker Okay, I've, uh, I've cut it to size, I've just been playing around with it, um, it's quite good material actually, see on the back of it the way it's formed, you can just bend it into any shape 
and it stays like it. So quite handy stuff. It is a little sort of awkward to work with when you've got it in a big sort of area like this. So what I've done is just using a couple of uh, Pico track pins and just gone around the edge of it in a few places to just pin it down and get it to conform to the shape that I'm trying to create. Those track pins are very, very thin, so they, they go through this very thin plywood, no problem at all. You don't need to worry about splitting it or anything like that. So I've not gone for anything too drastic or crazy. It's just a gentle, a gentle slope, nothing more. And it will be uh, mostly grassed over the top of that. And I might have uh, a perimeter fence that uh, keeps the, uh, the, the uh, track separated from it. But uh, I'll put the plaster on, see how it comes out. You need to use the, uh, the special shaper sheet plaster and you just simply mix it with water inside, it's just a powder. Um, mix it with uh, water, the ratios are on the, the back of the carton. Um, and then it says to just brush it onto the uh, sort of furry sort of texture that we've got on here. And that should set everything into a nice rock hard shell. Okay, the plaster's on, it's now starting to set. I notice there's a slight gap around the bottom edge where it's just lifting a little bit. So uh, I'm just going to use some uh, poly filler, just some ordinary household plastering type filler, and just run a bead of that around the edge just to seal it and get rid of the gap. Okay, quite happy with how that's come out, so I'm going to move on to another area. So the next area I'm going to do is this slightly awkward corner. I've had at least two scenes up on here, and to be honest I think anything that I put in here detracts from what I've got going on behind. I'd much rather this was just relatively plain in terms of the ground cover, but I still want a bit of variation. So. I've decided to go for, again, a slight hill that'll just gently work its way around the corner and should provide some really good angles and viewpoints for watching the trains and uh, future videos. Okay, the uh the shaper sheet has dried. I have to say I am uh, quite impressed with it. I never used it before, but uh, just uh, mould it to shape, put the plaster on, and uh, it's rock hard. Okay, so now I'm going to start uh, painting things. I'm going to start painting the hillside, and I'm also going to paint other areas um, in preparation for scatter material, grasses, gravels, dirt, things like that. So uh, I should uh, be able to start making this look much more interesting. I use three basic colours from Woodland Scenics, um, the water-based paints, and uh, they all mix together nice and easy, and that will allow me to just create a little bit of variation 
um, on the uh, the base colour, so some areas will be darker than others, and that'll uh, help make the uh, the top layer of scenery look all the more realistic. Okay, some of the paint is still drying, um, but overall it's looking quite good. So uh, I'm going to move on to putting uh, some uh, ground cover and some green stuff on the hill because uh, it's been a long time coming and I'm just desperate to uh, make something look a bit different because it is rather bland. You could argue that it's uh, easier to paint all of this before you do the ballasting. Um, in reality, I wasn't actually sure if I was going to need to paint it, um, and this is just the way things happened and things turned out. It's not a problem, it's been easy enough to paint, so uh, just bear that in mind. If you want to do it first, feel free. There's no specific order to doing any of this, this is just following me as I work my way through the scene. Okay, so the, the grass and the scatter has now dried. It's nice and varied along its length. Areas where there are more grass, areas where it's brighter, areas where it's darker, and areas where you can see through to the brown paint underneath. Got the same thing going on over here. There's slightly less grass in this area, a little bit more sort of scrubs, bushes, things like that. And as we move along, gradually changes. Got an area where the grass is thicker here. You can see it's starting to thin out again. And as we get to the edge, it's thinned out quite a bit more. So we've got a nice 
varied effect along the length of that. So moving back to this area, I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put up a, uh, a security fence and do the, uh, the Backman Scenecraft security fence going along the edge here to divide the, uh, the hillside from the yard and then uh, we're going to probably make a little scene up there some, uh, some people who've managed to get down the banking and come up to the fence to have a look and look through the fence and see what's going on and uh, I also need to uh, start doing this area I've got a rough idea of what I want to do so uh, we'll start building that up okay here we have the uh, security fence it's made by Backman Scenecraft and I've glued it all together with super glue and then airbrushed it in uh, roughly the same colour it came in but it just uh, takes away that sort of plasticky finish it had to it so uh, just needs gluing down now Okay, I've glued the fence in a couple of strategic places and placed as much as I can on and around it to keep it upright and uh, in contact with the baseboard. So uh, it's going to be a slow process, so I'll just keep adding glue to it and making sure it stays where it's uh, supposed to be. Okay, I left the, uh, the fence to dry. Very happy with how that's looking certainly worth painting it, it's just taking the shine off the plastic made it look a bit more real Okay, so with that, I think that's a good place to uh, finish up for this episode. So uh, next time, need to do more to this. Needs more foliage and effects going on. And I'd like to start filling this area up. And then we'll just gradually work our way out into the rest of the yard. So I hope you enjoyed the uh, video. And I'll be back soon with another one.